So just just to get a feel for who we got here in the room, um, raise your hand if you're if you work in the e-commerce analytics or web analytics. How about some financial analysis? Um, people interested in Google Analytics, data, data nerds. Come on, that should be everybody. That should be everybody. A couple math nerds probably. There's going to be a little bit of some some all of that. So hopefully a little bit of uh, something for everyone in the room and. I am going to ask you for a little bit of interaction, help me feel a little connected because these things are, they're kind of weird. Like I was just telling Colleen earlier, uh, it makes me feel like we're in a Zoom meeting, but in real life. Um, so a little interaction to help me feel a little more connected. I'd love like on Facebook or LinkedIn. I'd love a like, give me a thumbs up if you hear something you like. If you, if you hear something you if you that really is that kind of going out okay now i'm back uh now i'm back interaction yes uh if you hear something you love give me one of these do you know what this is this is a heart <laughs> you put your index finger and your thumb kind of at a 45 degree angle it's a heart i'm trying to teach you a couple of things in the presentation today but if you don't leave with anything other than this, I've, I've already taught you something. I feel pretty good. We're off to a good start, okay? Um, so, but to, to, there's certainly a lot with web analytics and clickstream behavior, but to set expectations, this session will be about our uh, GoDaddy's website, anal uh, website business. And when I say website business, I mean GoDaddy.com. It's really a e-commerce platform that is merchandised to try to sell products online. It's a key stream of revenue for us. And so we're keen on monitoring that performance um, and identifying where opportunities are to optimize. So the data-driven insights that my team provides directly influence our, feeds our online strategy. And so I'll be walking through how we operationalize data and maybe there's pieces of it you can pick up and apply to your business. So first, who am I? Who am I? Here's a little about me. Um, let's get to know each other. Well, actually, you'll just, you'll just be getting to know me because we got this weird one-way dialogue going on. But uh, hey, I live in the Seattle area with my husband and two adorable boys. And... Um, Big fan of big fan of college football. I know there are college football fans out there. Come on, and specifically uh, Washington State Cougs. Go Cougs! <laughs> uh, do I see? If, I see some Huskies. I see some Huskies in the crowd. Um, and of course, I love data. I've been working in the analytics industry for coming up on 14 years. <sighs> Long time. So um, feels like it. And, and th those 14 years, my career has spanned uh, four different companies. And what's, so I put this slide together, you know, when I was prepping for the deck and the talk, but uh, what's really, I love this next slide better. I just put this together like two hours before, slip, slipped it in there. I was able to meet up with at least one person I've worked with at every company. Like how cool is the Tableau conference to be able to bring like-minded data enthusiasts together? Such a like cool experience and it's been a lot of fun. So let me talk a little bit about my analytics philosophies. And, um, and so I joined GoDaddy about a year ago when you decide to join a company, fit is so important. So when I say ana my analytics philosophies, it's, they're totally congruent with how GoDaddy runs analytics, what our uh, data culture is like. And so you guys are like, but what are your analytics uh, philosophies? What is this? It's a foundation, it's a house foundation. Data enablement, get your data right, right before you're able before you're able to perform any sort of meaningful analysis. Um, and I'll talk about this a little bit later, but when I joined, this was so important for my team because we we're in a transition phase at that time from a legacy homegrown traffic, solu traffic solution to Google Analytics. Um, since we're new to G GA at that time, we needed to first invest in making that a robust data source. Um, 
again i'll go into a little more detail later but the second one here that's a, that's a fishing pole I, I already already went on you you saw what what it was but uh you gotta this is the idea that you have to teach how to fish not just give everyone fish because that's not scalable right and so democratization of the data both in terms of tools but also education education is so important uh, to prevent like insight bottlenecks right and that's a real thing in organizations uh, it takes a long time to get to great insight and sometimes you don't you don't always get there but once you do and you have this great insight inside of you it's still kind of meaningless and valueless until you're able to communicate it out broadly right and then that's the only way insight generation becomes valuable. And really Tableau is a great conductor of that and also speak to that in more detail. Oh, I, I, I'm going too fast. I kind of want you guys to like think about this before I show what, you, what it is, but I just showed you. <laughs> this is a balance beam and that it's meant to represent mental gymnastics. And so um, one, one of the, super important to me, oh, I just hit sorry. Super important to me that I think the value of analytics is to harness numbers into understanding and uh, it, the understanding required to make business decisions and take action. But sometimes that cycle of querying databases or clicking through Tableau reports can take a long time, hours, days, weeks, maybe longer. It's important to me that distance, hours, days, or weeks, how do we make that instantaneous? Instantaneous. Um, and we do use Tableau to make visualizations where the answer for your data consumer, your business partner, whomever is looking at it, the answer just jumps out of the page. Right? There's no mental gymnastics of, oh, this metric went up and this value went down and that means this or that. We take the friction take the friction out of that eliminate mental gymnastics so talking let me dive deeper into this data enablement piece um, when we talk about website tra traffic as a core uh, stream of our data what what is website traffic let's just go into traffic 101 traffic 101 here here's just like a you know obviously fake data set if we uh, look at what's going on here does this guy work? You can kind of see him. Um, here's a visitor GUID, probably, you know, cookie based. And he comes in and like, you know, clicks around, looks at a page, scrolls and sees some impressions, clicks on stuff, goes through a page. Four minutes into his uh, session, um, he gets hungry, goes to the kitchen, makes a sandwich, comes back 21 minutes later, right? Clicks around some more until he finally exits and a new user comes in and, you know, browses around. So traffic data is just this log of click stream, right? And session, the idea of a session, it's a man-made concept of, um, it, that just uses business logic and you think of a session as a container. You're containing like events in your click stream log right and so how many how many sessions do you think exist on this page right here this page of data Th throw a number up on your hand I, I see some two twos I see some twos um, I see I see a three I see a five okay so because it's business logic it can be whatever depending on what the criteria in your business logic is right so like in I mentioned earlier GoDaddy at the time when I was hired was going through this transition of uh, from legacy, this homegrown traffic solution to GA. Our sessions totally changed. Like how we counted sessions, our sessionization logic, one criteria was, oh, we no longer consider it like events if there's 20 minutes of timeout. So when this guy went to make a sandwich, came back 21 minutes later, legacy traffic would have said, oh, kick off, he kicked off a new session. Therefore, this would have counted as three sessions. In GA, which uses industry standard um, sessionization logic, it counts as two sessions. Industry standard timeout is 30 minutes. So that 21 minute gap wouldn't have kicked off a new session. Right, and so we were kind of in this like honeymoon phase with 
GA. How many, how many of you guys like uh, use GA at your work, right? And so there's a lot of good stuff, right? But there's also, um, there's certainly strengths, there's certainly weaknesses. And for weaknesses for us, you know, after kind of the honeymoon stage, after procurement is, um, the while it comes with hundreds of canned reports just at your fingertips, it's not really actually at your fingertips because they're not so intuitive to get to. Like that was definitely a weakness. Performance, you know, waiting for the spinny thing to go on forever. But really the biggest thing though was like we couldn't use it for revenue. Um, for, for many reasons, but the primary one being that um, you can opt out of cookies and the GA doesn't track you, uh, but then you purchase online anyway, like GA wouldn't have seen that revenue, right? So revenue didn't tie up to our revenue transactions database, our revenue source of truth. So these are some gaps that we had to fill in terms of that building that uh, robust data layer and investing in that layer. Right, and so what we ended up doing is we took all the Google Analytics data out of BigQuery, which is where it lives. BigQuery is like the massive you know, data platform where the raw data that powers the GA reporting, where that raw data lives. So we ETL it out of BigQuery and we put it in Hadoop. The reason why is because Hadoop is where our other enterprise data lives. So we wanted to co-locate them. And the reason for that is so that we can join them together and create this massive hybrid data set. And the, our table is called, you know, report, the I reports, the website activity t detail, WAD for short, if you will. <laughs> a lot of people tell me they don't like that nickname, but it's a mouthful, Other, if you say the full name. If you did a select star from WAD, this, and, and zoomed out like 100,000 times, this is what it would look like. This is the shape of that table. It's got a couple of hundred million rows where each row is a session, a couple of hundred columns that are attributes, either you know GA attributes such as uh, the IP region of that session, the channel it came in on. And also we have our order attributes, like if that session uh, resulted in an order, we know how much money you know they paid for what product, et cetera, and we've got you know, some null gaps here because unfortunately not every session results in an order, right? So you have the session, um, but then no, 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 no for the order attributes. And similarly here, we have some orders where they definitely ordered through the website, but we don't have their GA attributes because they, for example, declined cookies, right? And so this really comes having this hybrid data set that are you know uh, available to us that's really the foundation we built a lot of our data ags data reports off of and so that you know enables this democratization of our tooling our reporting and um by the way we still use ga like we pay a lot of money for that tool. We still want to use it. There are obviously, you know, strengths and weaknesses to it. GA is really good for fast and directional. And we create um, Tableau reporting off of this guy, Wad, <laughs> um, for accurate and custom. Like we can, you, can, you have the flexibility of creating whatever you want, not just this canned reporting out of GA. Right. And so here's an example, uh, fake data, real visualization of what we use on uh, dashboarding at GoDaddy. Um, and what you see is revenue in the current year compared to revenue prior year, the delta in between. And so this lives in a dashboard. Um, and some, if we were to analyze this, we would maybe send out something that says compared to, if we look at random week, say October 7th, we would say compared to the same period last year, revenue is up eight and a half percent, right? And so a couple things about that one, super critical, you know, if revenue is the business metric you're, that defines success for you, obviously you want to measure it, but two, uh, it's not quite ac 
actionable at this point. Like, what's a business partner? They looked at this, what, what are they gonna do? The action they're gonna take is probably no action because they're like, oh, we're up, all right, sounds good. And also, you, for the keen-eyed technical folks out there, you might have a, um, you might be asking, well, okay, revenue data, that all comes out of your tr transactions database. Why all this extra effort? <laughs> and it was a lot of effort to build all these pipelines um, and create our giant hybrid database. So let me talk a little bit about web drivers. I, you know, earlier in the session, I asked for e-commerce, people that worked in e-com, web, web analytics, got a lot of hands. So I know you guys are familiar with these common e-commerce KPIs, visits, conversion, order size. And they're really defined as visits or visits, certainly. Conversion, the numerators, purchase visits, you know, visits that result in transaction over visits. And uh, order size is the revenue divided by your purchase visits. And guys, we're in Vegas. I'm no, uh, I'm no David Copperfield, but get ready for a little math the magic right like these are important kpis because they literally make up revenue if you cancel out the numerators and the denominators what we're seeing is revenue equals revenue that's why these kpis are key performance indicators and this is a really simple view of it it can get as complex as you as you want so like in this example revenue we've now broken out blown it out at each potential friction step, right? So we still have visits, and then we have out of the visits that come, who stay? Like they're not bouncing. And of those ones that stay, who sees an opportunity, like sees an add to cart opportunity, like not just went and read a blog post, but you know, went to a sales page. And if they see that opportunity, do they click that add to cart? If they click that add to the cart, that they finally, you know, actually transact, and then of course your revenue, your order size, and, and again, I mean, it's just uh, numerators and denominators cancel out, right? And so I want you guys to think about this because it's super flexible. Um, I'm using it obviously for my business example, but you can um, it's fungible for what your business objectives are, right? Like if you're business objective, in this case, it's revenue for us. Your business objective, the thing that defines success for you is like increased customers. That's what you want to solve for customers. Well then like replace revenue with customers, replace revenue with customers here. All the other KPIs um, are, uh, are still relevant, right? And then you have your customers per purchase visit and then it all cancels out to that business metric you're looking to grow. And even what these are applies to, you know, like e-commerce, retail, online retail, perhaps. But even outside of those uh, businesses or industries, you will still have a business metric that can be broken out into drivers. I want you, seriously, after the session, think about how your business is really run. Think, think about the uh, goal uh, metric that you have and how it breaks out and those points of friction, how it breaks out, you've created KPIs that make sense for your business. Did you hear that last part I said? That makes sense for your business. Okay. So if we go back to our Tableau dashboard um, and we see, and, and by the way, uh, again, to that point about education, it's not just tools. You don't, you, 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 when you teach people how to fish, you don't just like throw fishing poles at them. You, you're like, this is how you, attach this bobber to that dealy and crank the, okay, I don't know how to fish, guys. But <laughs> what I'm trying to do here in our dashboard, this is like live on our, our website, uh, Tableau server, all marketing managers know, they know they need to understand sessions, non-balance, conversion, et cetera. They know they to monitor these, uh, metrics but right on the page we remind them why like literally if you were to multiply this out it adds up it equals up so um, this education is very pervasive and also in our i didn't build it out in my like fake sample data but in our um, dashboard we have slicers things like channel 
you know, that traffic was a acquired region, device, you know, mobile desktop, etc. Content group in terms of landing page, what's the first thing they landed on? And more than that. So if you imagine being able to start slicing into these drivers, like disaggregating out your revenue and everything that contributes up to your revenue, that becomes a lot more actionable. There's a lot more context, right? And so our original analysis here, where we said, you know, this week compared to prior period, revenue is up in half percent. Here you go, here's the revenue up in half percent. But now we have this context that says, right here are all your visits for this year versus last year um, and all the other, you know, KPIs and the change. So this eight and a half percent increase is primarily driven by strength in traffic and conversion. However, non-balance rate and order size are below last year's benchmarks. So this all of a sudden becomes a little bit uh, points your business partner in a direction where they can take action and have opportunity to optimize. And this is why we need the whole full hybrid data set. Um, so the next piece of uh, um, the, it, eliminating the mental gymnastics, right? Um, I wonder if it's gonna let me go to Excel. Okay. I wanna show you, so, so again, here we have our data that I've just copy and pasted out of Tableau. There's a way, again, it's just math, to assign impact in revenue. And, and the reason for that is, okay, if we, if we look back at this dashboard and imagine you have all these slicers, right? And you're filtering to email and you're filtering to international, you're filtering to desktop. And every time you filter, something changes and you're like, oh my gosh, okay, now non-bounce rate is my driver and it's up 5%. And, and, and then all of a sudden, you know, this other segment uh, order size, you know, is a driver and it's up, you know, 6% or down 6%. It's not quite apples to apples. Like what does it actually mean to the bottom line? Those are the mental gymnastics, right? That you have to do or your business partner has to do. How can we eliminate that? And to make it apples to apples, um, it's math, right? So if you look at and by the way, so here's revenue. It equals out, like I was saying. You multiply out everything together, and that's your revenue. And for your like contribution of revenue in these um, drivers, looking at the difference and multiplying it out, and this revenue contribution total, it adds up, right, to the actual difference. So now, all of a sudden, you can say, oh, is Colleen here? <laughs> huh, that's weird. I don't know why you guys can't see. Okay, that's too bad, but I also have um, I'm trying to go to Excel. All right. Well, I talked a whole bunch without having it on my screen, guys. So I'm gonna say the same words, but now you can see what I'm talking about. So here are like last year and uh, this year's um, driver metrics that I just copy and pasted out of the uh, Tableau, right? And here's our eight and a half percent. It's really gap of, uh, you know, $10,000. And how we can, you know, attribute what this 10% increase in visits revenue impact is is just a formula oh and I was showing you earlier too like here's how revenue adds up it, it just multiplies out right multiplies out and if we want to look at the impact then of each 
Um, what does 10% mean? It actually translates to, you know, added positive $12,000 uh, to your bottom line, right? Because you're taking the difference and multiplying it out, right? Same for all of the rest. And this guy here is really just a sum. It adds up exactly to your total. So once we have this, then you're really able to um, eliminate that mental gymnastic step of uh, what does it mean when this goes up and it only went up for this region and it went down for this other region, right? Like these are the things that we think we're doing analysis, but it's really mental gymnastics. How do we, like you can, we can systematically eliminate that so we should to uh, close the distance. Again, this is one of the key, key, I, I, I tell my team, right? Like key value of analytics is to eliminate the dis distance between a whole bunch of numbers to um, business action, like some action the business can take uh, to optimize, right? So where were we here? And we're at a, we're at Tableau, right? I saw a really good dashboard yesterday that really embodies, epitomizes this idea of like taking business action. Want to see it? <laughs> Thank you. This one, she is a supporter. All right, here it is. Um, this dashboard, this is my coworker, Larry. <laughs> He's waving. He's got a couple chips in his hand. He's like, um, w w what should I do with it? This is my coworker, Josh. He says, you gotta put it on black. Cause uh, this dashboard tells him, the answer immediately jumps off the page. Like it's hard to see, but it's, you know, less than 50% black. So the odds are, you know, that that might be what it's gonna, what it's gonna land on next at this roulette table. So this is the ideal dashboard, right? But here's what we actually do at GoDaddy. Oh, here's uh, some screenshots of what I showed you in Excel. Here are distilled insights, right? So now that we're able to kind of create contribution or create that apples to apples conversation, make all our driver metrics from oranges and bananas of conversion and order size into the one that we really care about, revenue, right? And so what we're looking at on this dash is, you know, a period of time compared to a different period of time, or it's a target, I don't know, I do know but I'm not telling you. And, um, and at a glance, you can see um, the delta, what adds up to this delta is really negatively driven by conversion, right? Visits, we're doing pretty good year over year or period over period. Um, and here's how it splits out by new customer, uh, existing customer, different devices. And these tree maps down below tell uh, a story is about region. Like here's how much impact, negatively in this case, came from the US. You guys don't see my mouse. I'm like trying to mouse over. Okay, I'll point. Like here's where it, uh, you know, shows the negative impact by region or positive impact. Right, and this is by channel, traffic acquisition channel, and also landing page content group. What's the first page they landed on? How that is contributing to our bottom line. And so imagine this dashboard, our whole goal, right, of wanting to go from a bunch of numbers to distilled insights. Remember this? There's a whole bunch of numbers, kind of meaningless. Distilled insights meaningless numbers immediately jumps off the page to the point where we can say you know the, uh, again this is our initial analysis compared to the same period last year revenue is up blah, blah blah it's driven by these drivers though overall revenue is up ten thousand dollars this is the segment this is the segment that has a really 
big negative impact. Um, we would have been up $15,000 if it wasn't for this segment. So it gives you more clarity, it gives the business partner you know, idea of where to attack, where to optimize. So in other, we can also say other areas of opportunity are, this weakness is really driven by desktop, mobile shows strength. So immediately they know where to go. Um, focus on desktop and not, not mobile, right? And, and in fact, what are they doing in mobile? Maybe can they apply that to desktop? Uh, order size decline, limited to a couple markets. So again, they don't have to chase goose chase, right? You know exactly where to look. And uh, traffic volume strength, like we saw traffic up year over year. Email, hey, give that a email marketing manager a raise, right? And so um, we, we've come a long way, right? And uh, so this is actually my last content slide and so I have uh, just time for questions. I'd love to take questions. And also, if you liked any of this or loved any of this, please evaluate, you know, give me some feedback. Um, but I'd love to take questions. There's a mic here so we can hear each other.